You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. So you may or may not have heard there's a new incoming mayor in New York City. He's indicated he's going to bring back the undercover and just plain clothes, um, kind of a gun violence reduction team like they've got in Portland, whatever you want to call that. And then the leader of the Black Lives Matter in New York City, not affiliated with the national one. No, they wouldn't take any responsibility for um, the New York City BLM's leader, his his words. He basically said, if New York's incoming mayor does this, and if they go this direction, there will be blood. Just Just some crazy stuff. And... One of the things that the uh, one of New York City's top police officer is saying is New York Police Department won't bend to criminality like Portland and Seattle. So Seattle has just become kind of this known quantity in Portland as well as, well, if you want to look at a situation where there is lawlessness just kind of running rampant, yeah, Portland, Seattle, look across the United States, over there, upper left USA. They're the perfect example of where we don't want to be. That's what we're talking about today. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies, and I talk about stuff from a real estate perspective, and a lot of that has to do with a little thing called public safety. And that's why we focus so much time and energy here in the Seattle Real Estate Podcast on issues like defunding the police and that whole full circle coming about. Maybe that wasn't the best idea ever. Now we're looking at refunding the police. All right, let's jump on in. So New York Police Department won't bend to criminality like Portland and Seattle police. Okay, they're saying the police in this headline because that grabs headlines. In Seattle's case, it's not really the cops. And in Portland, I don't think it's the cops either. It's city leadership that is dictating. Okay, don't do that. Oh, yeah. Okay, you can do that. Oh, don't do that. Use these two. Oh, don't use the. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just and and basically just let everything go. Just let everything go. And you, you, on top of that, you have like 300 cops quit or retire, do lateral moves, leave the police department, whatever you want to call it. We're low on numbers. You know, this whole thing, it doesn't doesn't go in the best direction as far as public safety goes for the entire city of Seattle or Portland for that matter or any of the cities that defunded their police departments, they're all kind of on that. All right, we're going to do we're going to reimagine and rethink what refunding the police would look like. Okay, so the former police commissioner responds to Black Lives Matter New York co founder, but not affiliated with national uh, Hawk Newsom's promise of bloodshed if the anti crime unit returns. So the logic on this one is, um, it's fairly shocking, but a lot of what Black Lives Matter says is shocking, to me anyway, from a logical standpoint, it just doesn't really match up with what we've got going on with reality. So New York City won't surrender to criminality like Portland and Seattle, ex-New York Police Department Police Commissioner Howard Safir told Fox News. The city's former top cop was responding to Black Lives Matter co-founder Hawk Newsom's predictions of bloodshed if incoming Mayor Eric Adams reinstates an undercover police unit to target gun violence. Let's see. So we're going to send in some undercover cops that are going to work on reducing gun violence. So then we're going to threaten that with more violence and bloodshed because that makes sense. Work with me here. Work with me. What are we doing? It's hard to say, right? What Newsom said that there was going to be riots and bloodshed, he has a vast misunderstanding of the New York City Police Department, said Safir, who was appointed police commissioner in 1996 by then Mayor Rudy Giuliani, who did a little cleaning up of his own, correct? Am I correct? It's not Portland. It's not Seattle. It's not Minneapolis. Well, those are some low blows there. And this is coming from New York City. Interesting, right? It's not Portland. It's not Seattle. It's not Minneapolis. Kind of going to, okay, here's the low of the low as far as criminality goes. Got these cities. We're not there. This is what we're doing. It's what New York is saying. Um, it, it's not Minneapolis, he said. If Black Lives Matter commits crimes on the street, they will be arrested. Oh, those are fighting words right there, because here in Seattle, we just kind of let that go. Portland, 
They really just let that go. Not in New York City, right? Police abandoned the East Precinct in Seattle. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Police abandoned the East Precinct in Seattle during the Black Lives Matter demonstration. We know all about that. That is that is being worked through in the court systems right now. We've got lawsuits just ricocheting off everywhere. Some being dismissed, some carrying forward. Just it, the whole thing's just a mess, right? That's what happens when you have somebody in governmental entity basically abandon an area with law enforcement. Just now, nah, let's just pull out. We'll see what happens. Summer of love or not. Not really sure, but we're going to find out. And we did. Some people got killed, mainly kids. And um, yeah, and then it was over. After a tense sit-down Wednesday with the incoming mayor, Newsom told reporters that if Adams brought back the New York Police Department's anti-crime unit, there will be riots, there will be fire, and there will be bloodshed. And I watched that. I watched that interview. And I was kind of like, well, does he mean that literally? Or is he talking figuratively? Because it felt like it was literal. So we're going back to the whole riots, fire, and people getting hurt. Mm, okay. All right. Yeah. But Adams announced the next day that the resurrection of the plainclothes um, unit, he just straight up. So the new incoming mayor in New York City is um, former police. Who, who would have guessed that? I mean, hey, now what? A cop? Hmm. Newsom said the move would lead to police brutality that will trigger widespread unrest and violence. I think the main thing that's triggering widespread unrest and violence is saying things like there will be riots, there will be fire, and there will be bloodshed. Not necessarily taking criminals off the street. No, that's, that's not what's going to cause the rioting. It's inciting riots with nonsense like this. Safir called Adams' decision to bring back the task force absolutely right. Adams worked under Safir in the department. So Safir is the guy we're talking about saying he is not, uh, New York is not Portland, it's not Seattle. He worked under Adams, who was the new incoming mayor um, uh, to New York City. The ex-commissioner, whose tenure, okay, a New York City police commissioner, is the new mayor. The ex-commissioner, whose tenure was marked by a significant decline in crime, uh oh, are we are, are we supposed to be okay with that? A decline in crime because it seems like everything else goes up. I'm all on board with decline in crime. So a significant decline in crime. He resigned in 2000, the year 2000, amid mounting criticism that his tactics were too extreme. 21 years later, elected mayor. Interesting, right? Are we just having this massive? return to, uh, you know what? We went down that road just to scooch. Yeah, it didn't look all that great. It wasn't too promising. So now we're, we're going to go back to a little bit more moderate, a little bit more moderate type decision making here across the board. Safir stressed the importance of the anti-crime unit, which began in 1994 and was disbanded under outgoing mayor Bill de Blasio last year. Not shocking. A lot of criticism uh, lobbed on Bill de Blasio, and probably rightfully so. That guy, hmm, he's got some interesting stuff going on, most of which I ha have a tricky, difficult time. Crazy, crazy, crazy times, right? So he said patrol cops react to crimes in progress, but they don't go looking for guns and drugs, which is the role of the undercover unit. So, yeah, you got to have a little of both, right? I mean, you've got to have units in Portland and Seattle. We've kind of given up a lot of that because we've got not enough police officers. And let's be honest, we've pretty much legalized everything. And ah, it's okay. That's a misdemeanor. Not a big deal. It's all right. It'll be better. People who carry guns illegally are not going to jobs. They're going out to commit crimes, he added. These plainclothes cops operate in poor neighborhoods, most affected by violence, and these cops are there to protect those communities, Safir explained. Okay, so there's that. All right. Hmm. And, and Black Lives Matter doesn't want safety being brought into their neighborhoods. They're afraid that there's going to be violence if undercover cops comes to the neighborhood. All right. 
that's where this whole thing is just a massive disconnect here, right? So he called the status quo unacceptable, meaning what's going on right now. You see all these calls for Black Lives Matter and what they're asking for. You don't see them really helping out in the communities that need it the most. You see them lighting on fire and trashing commercial buildings in downtown. You don't see them working the neighborhoods that actually need the help. Those are just some of my observations. I'm like, okay. And then you see them talking about, well, there will be bloodshed. And then corporate BLM says, oh, that's not us. That doesn't reflect our values. Well, who are we supposed to believe here? What do we have going on? Because it's kind of hard to figure out. All right. Are we going to believe that guy? Well, and here's what they're actually doing. This is what they're doing in the streets. A couple of billion dollars worth of damage later, right? I mean... Am I, what am I missing here? I, I, I don't think I am. So what is the message here? What, what are we going for? If you bring more police officers in the form of undercover cops into our neighborhoods, we're going to react with bloodshed and rioting and violence. Okay. So I think we're, we're, we're like two ships passing in the night, not really communicating here. And I think the, the bottom line is that Send more cops into the neighborhood, into lower economic neighborhoods. All right, there, there's going to be issues there, just like the whole George Floyd deal. Well, we're trying to get away from that, you know, trying to do some more retraining, whatever it is, and uh, make things better as far as interaction with the police and the public. In the meantime, you've got this crazy, you know, crime statistics, just crime is, is running rampant in a lot of these neighborhoods. You got shootings, you've got violence, you've got all kinds of stuff going on. And so New York Police Department saying, oh, we're not going to bend to criminality like Seattle and Portland, which is not a laughing matter. But if you kind of look at what's going on, I mean, that's it, it's pretty good example of, okay, how not to run a city as far as your crime goes. And what's really interesting here in Seattle, we just hired the first city attorney that's, uh, get this, a Republican. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, I just said that in Seattle. So you've got this return to full circle in the whole in the whole public safety deal. And people, I think people are scared. They're like, I don't really like what's going on. I don't like how a lot of this stuff is being handled. Maybe we need to give something else a little bit of a try, a little bit of a go see here. Because the the violence that happened after the Black Lives Matter deal with George Floyd, that was a pretty good example of what people don't want to see as a reaction to anything that happens out there. Now, you might say, well, you got to have that in order to get some forward progress. I haven't seen a lot of forward progress out of the $2 billion worth of damage done to you know, America after the whole George Floyd thing. Didn't see a lot of progress there. That... I. If, if I'm missing that, let me know. Um, but here's here's where we are. We've got we've got this return of uh, let's take a look, see at something maybe a little bit more conservative, a little bit more right in the middle ish, not quite so far off to the left. So I think after the whole George Floyd thing, America is willing to give the Black Lives Matter a little look, see a little peeky peek. And we took a look at that and we looked at some of the actions going on. And then as that became not so prominent a emphasis with the United States, got this whole thing of crime rising while we're defunding the police. That didn't work out. And so then we knee jerked back to, ah, we need more police. Uh, we, need to, we need to be offering them incentives to come and work for us, billboards. I mean, all this stuff, stuff that we've covered here. Just this knee jerk reaction to, you know what? Yeah, maybe public safety is something that, you know, we need to focus on here a little bit more. And it seems for some unusual reason that, Police officers, they seem to be at the forefront of this. I'm not sure how we missed this first go around here, but um, yeah. So when somebody from Black Lives Matter says right now in 2021, after those most re recent elections, there will be riots, there will be fire, and there will be bloodshed. I think people are looking at that going, mm, yeah, not not so much. Um, we're... 
we're probably not going to be accepting of that. And I think even the left side of things is like, oh, yeah, that that's not a good look. We're not doing well based on that. So let's try and scooch away from that just a tad because that whole defunding the police thing, that uh, oh, that is not a popular concept at the moment. We don't want to affiliate ourselves with that because we might lose some more elections. Bottom line, right? So there will be riots, there will be fire, and there will be bloodshed. Okay, those are some interesting words to focus on. Um, and it was interesting to see the Black Lives Matter national reaction to that. Uh, that that's that's not our guy. Uh, that's that's not us. That's whoo, whoo. we're not sure what he's doing over there, but not 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 on our team. Even though it's the same 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 general organization, right? And you might nitpick and say, "Well, they're not officially endorsed." No, but it's the founder of the New York Department, right? Black Lives Matter. So what are we doing here, folks? Yeah, it's be interesting to see. It will be really interesting to see what the reaction is. You put some plain clothes cops doing their job in the communities that want them to do their job so those communities can be safer. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're just going to have to get there and see, right? And um, so, yeah, this whole thing is just... Um, so what, what does the, uh, what does Eric Adams, the incoming mayor, what does he have to say about the whole bloodshed riots if, um, and, and this is a, this is a black mayor, right? I mean, and so we're kind of, we're kind of going down these roads of, all right, but if he says that and he's black and he knows these communities backwards and forwards, what do we got going on? The head of Black Lives Matter of Greater New York met with Eric Adams, the city's mayor-elect, to discuss policing and warn there will be bloodshed. All right. Adams himself, a former police captain on Wednesday, met with Hawk Newsom. We're kind of going backwards, right? And behind closed doors, the meeting was tense and turned into a shouting match, the paper reported. One of the key issues raised was the possibility that the city could reinforce its anti-crime unit, which Newsom compared to the Nazi Gestapo. All right. So we've got we've got some different perspectives here. Um, if he thinks that they're going to go back to the way of the old ways of policing, then we're going to take to the streets again. That's not what we're saying. We're saying, all right, we're going to put this unit in place. We've already done a lot of the reform, all that stuff. And if we need more reform, put some more money into it. But in the meantime, you need to do something to bring the crime the crime rates down, specifically the gun violence, because that stuff's just off the charts, it, it, especially here in Seattle and in Portland. Portland, just, it, yeah, that's it, very difficult. So it'll be super interesting to see if there is any actual reaction, if plainclothes policemen are brought back in and some kind of violence reduction team and see what the actual response is from the communities that this is this is going to be happening in. We need some of that in Portland. You need something. You need to enact something. I am no public safety expert, but uh, when I read all these stats, when I read each weekend how many people are shot, how many people were killed, it kind of makes me think all this rioting and this other stuff, you know, if those focuses could have been put into the actual communities where the damage is being done, that seems like a, uh, a much better use of energy and money than, you know, a couple of billion dollars with the damage across the United States. But that's just my perspective. And I'm a real estate guy. So take that with a grain of salt. But I know a lot of you think the same thing. It's like, all right, what are we doing here? What's the end goal? What's the end message here? Because we're not really getting it. But I wanted to I wanted to do a quick, um, quick, quick e uh, podcast. I almost said email. I wanted to do a quick email on this, but I wanted to do a quick podcast on this because uh, calling out Portland and Seattle, it just kind of shows where we're at. I mean, let's, you know, in conversation, well, where do they have the most out of control crime that could be mitigated, could be managed better? Oh yeah. Portland and Seattle. We're the Seattle Real Estate Podcast, so why wouldn't I cover this? All right. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for being part of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast community. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Thanks again. We'll talk soon. Until then, stay safe. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.